So now that I got this uh, kind of figured out, uh, I'm try working on coming up with better ideas to, to enclose that. I was talking to one of my coworkers who has a, uh, a 3D printer. And uh, like I said previously, I could get another case like this, uh, but was thinking about maybe 3D printing one that has a two piece back. Um, I think if we did that, we could, had this back cut off and um, put another piece on and had it to where it would screw in or put it like a tab over on this side where it could screw down and the tab on this side where it screws down and then have it split here where it could screw in with one of those on the serial connector or something but still still working on that but <clears throat> anyway so up here to the front we've got now that we've got the the serial connector moved to the back, <clears throat> we've got to worry about our map connector now. So I know that I need to drill a hole through the firewall since I can't move that. So here is the brick nose. Well, so far as I know, the EEC4 on any of these trucks, weatherproof gasket. I ordered a new one, um, but for right now, this is going to help me find where I need to cut. Now I can see this EEC4 gasket is about halfway on the map, that connector. So what I'm gonna take and do is take this inside. I'm gonna mark this gasket right here where it connects. And then I'm going to take and put the gasket in the truck and I'm going to measure and put a mark where that, where the, my marks line up against the firewall and then we're gonna take and drill a hole. Using my highly detailed and perfect Milwaukee ink saw marker. Man, you might think that that's got an extension on it right there, but alas, it's just my mark. So now to get inside and find where to drill. All right, y'all, as you can see, I got my hole drilled. So um, I went, started at uh, a smaller size, just so I could get it started. It walked on me a little bit, but um, the vacuum hose is quarter inch. So since I didn't want it, you know, be a super tight fit right around the vacuum hose, I stepped it up uh, to five sixteens in size and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, I, uh, filed over a little bit to the right but whenever i punched it larger i mean i'm right where i need to be so we're just gonna keep going i got the hole for the map vacuum connection uh drilled in the firewall so next i needed to clearance the weatherproof gasket now i have a new one that's coming but i wanted to make changes to the old one then i could you know if i screwed it up no big deal uh, so anyways, I was able to take and using some dikes, cut, well, I marked, and then I cut where the map connection would go. So let me show you. And voila. So I test fit with the vacuum hose that uh, DIY Autotune sells you. Um, I fit it in there and it fit pretty good. I'm going to trim probably... Uh, just a little bit more around it not much though so I'm gonna get to that okay so I had to cut a little bit more I'm gonna clean that up right there but I uh, was able to use the circular saw circular saw the cutoff wheel and slice down and then I was able to use the jigsaw to go down uh anyways that's why it's much better i didn't have the the cutoff wheel for up here and you know again this is one of those things that you do it and you think dang i should have did that a little different and that's exactly what happened um so anyways uh i need to looks like i need to move that connector down a little bit uh, i guess it got jostled or moved getting in here anyway so i had to cut the bolt hole that would normally be for this uh, hold down bracket for the ECM. So anyways, I was able to drill it 
I found the 1364th uh, drill bit worked perfect because uh, I don't have any metric bits, drill bits, but that 10 millimeter, uh, that, I'm sorry, it's an eight millimeter retaining bolt uh, went straight down in there and snugged up perfect and tight. So yeah, you guys would have to take and do that. Otherwise, um, maybe somebody will do a little different than I and find, you know, a different way to relocate that upper serial plug to where you don't have to deal with that. But, um, you know, all these things are a learning experience. Now that we got the ECM mounted in there pretty well that I'm happy with, um, we've got to get to the map sensor. So the map sensor on these 460s is right there. So um, I disconnected the vacuum line off that and I'm gonna pull the electrical connector off here because that's something else you have to do. And you need to uh, wrap the connector so that way it won't touch or ground on anything um, and find a place to put it. But the map plugs into, if you could see it, so, I got a seven 30 seconds hose and I've routed it down and around over the booster here. I'm gonna replace that channel. I gotta find some, I mean, it's all dry rotted to hell and run it down. So here is the original uh, plastic line that they had for the map. And they had these two rubber elbows on it. Now I'm gonna see eventually if I can find some of these uh, to replace but these are as you can see dry rotted and garbage the one that i actually took off the back of the truck intake was in worse shape than that one was so um but this hose here as you can see is a lot larger in diameter than the map vacuum hose that they send you so I have this kit here of vacuum connectors and adapters and trees. So I'm going to use one of these, which is the eighth inch to quarter inch adapter. And I test fit it and it fit perfectly. So that's what we're going to do. Alrighty. So we're at the next point where we got the ECU mounted in there. We need to get the wide band installed. So I got out of the truck and I started looking for the O2 sensor location thinking okay all I need to do is unscrew it put the wide band in and we're good to go not the case I ran my hands all around the exhaust on the left and right all the way down and found out that a they not only did they remove the cat but I couldn't find the O2 sensor bung or the O2 sensor well I found the O2 sensor disconnected in the bed of the truck, or rather in the toolbox of the truck. So I was like, okay, where's the plug? Because I need to make sure that that's not compromised, that it's not just clipped off or whatnot. So I started looking and I found it originally zip tied to the top of the transmission, but thankfully, as you can see, still intact but it was just zip tied to the top of the transmission. So now there's no O2 sensor bung in here to put the wideband on. So now that leaves us with the problem that we're either gonna have to try to take the exhaust off because I don't have the, the connections here to hook up the welder. We're gonna either gonna have to try to take it off, cut it off, or uh, I've been reading about these clamps uh, for an O2 bung clamp. So we're just going to have to see, do a little research and see if, if that'll do it. So as I was saying, I was reading about some kits that you could buy that are a clamp on O2 sensor bung. So I think uh, that's probably what we'll take and do. Um, but I'm going through and editing this footage and I'm seeing that, dang, the other side of the truck really looks terrible in video. Like, I don't know, I guess it's just the color contrast on the TV or something, but it, I don't know, I think it looks worse in, in uh, on video. Um, but it's just kind of a funny observation. So, um, as always, thank you for joining us for now on part two of the Megascord install. Um, we've got a little bit longer to go. 
um, before we're really ready to, to try to test fire it or whatnot. And, you know, we're still working through some of the weird electrical things that this truck has. And there's a lot more to come. Thanks very much. And as always, the House of Cog wishes you kapla. Till next time.